What's up guys, Mark back here with yet another video and on today's program I'm going to be showing you guys how to work with LUTs inside of Final Cut Pro 10. I had several questions that came through the channel asking me exactly how to work with uh, log footage in Final Cut Pro 10. I know that DaVinci Resolve is a pretty complicated uh, program and it has a very steep learning curve. So for those of you that are maybe not ready to tackle a completely new uh, program, Final Cut Pro 10 has everything you could possibly need in order to grade and uh, alter your footage. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you all that we're going to need a plugin. I'm going to leave the link to that plugin uh, down in the description below. Uh, you can pick it up from Motion VFX. It's called M LUT, the letter M and then L U T, M LUT. And uh, once you go to motionvfx.com and you get it downloaded, uh, pause the video right here and we'll come back and we'll get started. So now that you've got it downloaded, um, you should see it in the effects panel and it's called M LUT. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click it, add it to my footage. Uh, you'll notice that it didn't do anything to the footage itself just yet because you have to load up a color space profile or a LUT into the plugin so that it knows what type of color uh, correction that you're wanting to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit MLUT library and I'm going to put some links just below the motion VFX uh, link that will tell you exactly where you can pick up some of these LUTs. As a matter of fact, I may just, uh, I don't really want to package them up myself and give them to you guys, which would obviously make it easier, but I will give you the links uh, where I pick them up that basically converts uh, the log file over into a very useful color space. So once you get those loaded up, uh, come on back here and we'll pick it up from right at this point. All right, so now that you've got your LUTs all downloaded, uh, what you want to do is you want to open up, click MLUT library, and then we're going to click on import. And then it'll open up a window. You just find where you downloaded the LUTs to and then click uh, import. And inside of here, uh, you can select the different types of LUTs that you want to use. Um, I'm going to choose something from the AC A7S709 LUT. Um, and I believe that I did 709-801 over, if I'm not mistaken. That looks about right. Let me look at my scopes and see how that changed it. That's pretty close. Let's see what 2 over it is. Perfect. As you can see up here in the RGB parade, all of my colors are within the 0 and the 100. So that's exactly where we want to be. So I was re recording this at um, the S-Log2. 800 ISO and it looks like I was about two stops over so I'm gonna click OK and it looks like my RGB uh, overlay is all good and my Luma scope shows me that I am well within range of the 100 and the 0 so uh, what I'm gonna do is if you come back over here to the MLUT uh, in the ex in, in the blah, 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 in the inspector panel uh, you can choose to adjust your highlights. So if you want to bring those up a bit, you can. Mine are right about where they need to be, though, at, a, uh, at about 0.95. It looks like it looks like I'm touching just a bit. But right about there is okay, 0.9697. And uh, the shadows, if I want to increase the contrast, I just pull that up a bit. I can push the shadows down, but I really don't want to do that. I like the shadows... Um, just up above the uh, the zero line over here on the uh, the Lumiscope. I don't want to completely crush my blacks. If I wanted to do that, I would probably just use a consumer grade video camera because it always crushes the blacks and blows out the highlights when you have a, an extremely high contrast scene like this. And that's exactly the reason why it looks very video and the reason why film looks very different from that. But you can mess around with your midtones a bit, so if you wanted to bring those up a bit, uh, or you could bring those down a smidge, you can move the entire middle section up or down just a little bit. So I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit. So 1.16, uh, and then I'm going to bring up the uh, saturation just to boost up the color just a little bit. So maybe about 0.4, eh. 
Yeah, 0.43. That's okay. I like it right about there. And the hue, I'm just going to not touch. I'm in a very good color space and it doesn't look like it's too far off. The one thing that I do notice is that I've got a bit more blues uh, than I would normally have. So it's being, the blues are being boosted just a little bit. So I'm going to try and color correct for that. And if you swap over here in your effects uh, panel, I'm going to click color, double click color correction. And that'll load me up a, uh, a color board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to balance the color in this scene. And I'm going to try to bring a bit of the blues out. So I'm going to take my, my global puck here. And with this global puck, you can either add colors or decrease colors from everything. So I'm going to try to bring it down just a little bit to kind of even it out there. That looks a bit more natural to me. So I moved it uh, to 192 degrees and then just minus negative five. That gave me a pretty decent color balance. We're lacking just a smidge in the greens. So if I guess if I wanted to pull those up and boost the greens up just a bit. I don't want to go too crazy though. Because if you notice there is a little bit of green here. So everything is pretty much in line with where it kind of needs to be. Uh, and then I'm just going to do a quick desatch oration. Just looks a little too colorful for me. Anyway, I think we're pretty good right about there. I did want to show you a couple of other things that you can do uh, with your log footage already inside of Final Cut Pro 10. And what you can do is inside of MLUT, uh, if you want to make your footage look a bit more like film, you can add film grain to it as well. Um, nine times out of ten, I don't mess with the amount. Just a little bit is good enough. You can also add a bit of Gaussian noise, which is pretty close to film grain. But they do allow you to have some other options. So if you wanted to go TV static, you can go that route. If you wanted to do white noise, you could go that route. If you want to do blue noise and help reduce the banding uh, in your skies, some of the S-Log footage that you'll record will... Uh, create banding in the skies. It, very, very blue uh, shots where you're taking maybe a bird in flight or something along the sky, you're going to notice some banding. So that will help reduce that. And then, of course, you can also introduce in some pink noise. But like I said, nine times out of ten, I'm just sticking with film grain and I'm not doing anything else to it. Uh, I always leave the monochrome checked. I don't want it to be anything other than monochrome. And uh, the blend mode almost always leave it on overlay there's really not many reasons to do that auto animate does exactly what you think it does it auto animates the grain so that it moves and dances on top of your footage making it look more like film and then of course you can uh, mix the grain into your original footage by decreasing or increasing the slider um, I usually don't mess around with that very much either but sometimes if it's just a bit too noticeable in certain shots I will decrease it a bit so that it's not as noticeable uh, again, it all just depends on the project that you're working with. Uh, one more thing that I like to do, and this is completely personal preference, is on occasion you're going to want your footage to be just a little bit sharper. So uh, Final Cut Pro 10 has a sharpen effect built in. Just double click it, add it to your footage, and it will just add a bit of sharpening. So I'm going to turn it off so you can see with it without, and then turn it back on so you can see it with. And nine times out of 10, I think that the default of 2.5 is just a bit much. I think it looks too much like video. So I'll usually just turn it down to one. And then I also add an unsharp mask. Now the default settings for the unsharp mask are really, really bad. So uh, I'm gonna turn this down to about a 1.5. And then I'm gonna turn the amount down to about 0.5. So there we go. That gives us just a little bit of extra detail in the very, very fine uh, portions of the video. So if we turn off Unsharp Mask and then turn it back on, let me increase the size maybe so you all can see this a bit better. So Unsharp Mask, you can see it gets significantly softer, those very, very fine details. And then quite a bit better there. So you turn off the sharpen and the unsharp mask, and that's pretty much what you're left with. 
but if you want to increase the sharpness and the uh, and the finer details turn the sharpening back on so that will help your footage out just a, a bit if uh, if that's kind of the look that you're going for so overall these are the main things that I do as a starting point uh, to color correct in my footage I'll add a bit of sharpening a bit of an unsharp mask I will load up my LUT into Final Cut Pro 10 using MLUT, a completely free program for motion VFX. And it gets me right about where I need to be. And I do just some basic color balancing of the footage to get me to a base starting point. After that, I will do any sort of specialized looks or something. So if we want to warm up the color, if we want to cool off the color, if we want to add something very specialized to the footage, we can do that later. But this is a good starting point for uh, getting your log footage from that completely flat look at least into a color space that you can begin to work with. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, share the video on the internet with your friends and family and colleagues and so on. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. At any rate, guys, thanks again for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace.